belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All the glory, all of the glory belongs to All of the glory belongs to you. All the glory, Lord, yes. All of the glory belongs to you. All the glory, Lord, oh. All of the glory belongs to you. Pastor Eric again, and it is good to be with you uh, on this Thanksgiving Day 2020. And before I say anything else, let me say this first to you. Happy Thanksgiving. And thank you for giving me a few minutes out of your Thanksgiving Day, uh, just so that we can together focus on what the day really is all about. And it really is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it everything? So uh, once again, thanks for being with me. I have a word to share with you. Uh, some encouragement and some thoughts of my own and the Word of God on the subject of why we give thanks. And before we get into it, let's pray first. That's always the first thing we need to do. Father, in Jesus' name, bless our time together. Uh, let this Word uh, really, really um, uh, fit in the place in our hearts where we need encouragement, where we need strength, where we need guidance and wisdom. For your word is light, and, and in that light we want to walk and be a, a true testament to the goodness of our Lord and King Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for the Holy Spirit. Fill us all as we listen, and give us the wisdom and guidance that we're looking for every time we come to you around your word. Thank you once again, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's get right into the word of God this morning. Uh, Psalm 107, and I'm going to read to you, um, actually, 
uh, five different verses, but you're going to, to see something very interesting about what I read. And, and we'll start with Psalm 107.1. The word says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. The second verse I'm going to read to you, and we're going to read together, is Psalm 107.8. It says, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Now, I'm going to continue reading scriptures, but you know what? The, the scripture on your screen is not going to change because it also says in Psalm 107, 15, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I'm going to read another verse from Psalm 107. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. That's verse 21. And one more verse from Psalm 107, verse 31. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Do you think the psalmist uh, is trying to get something across to us? <laughs> oh, that men would give thanks to God, to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He says that five times in these verses, there are probably, I think, about 35 verses in Psalm 107. Five of them say exactly the same thing. He's getting the point across to us that thanksgiving to our God for his goodness is a primary, primary, uh, I, be I believe, duty and honor and pleasure of the children of God. Once we realize his goodness, oh, the psalmist says, that we would give thanks to God. And I say this to you today, uh, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to say this to you, oh, that we would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to us and to the children of men all over the world. You see, in Psalm 137, the psalmist pleased with us over and over to give thanks to God for his wonderful works toward us. He pleads because he knows that, that we are far too often distracted and, and, and looking at people and circumstances when we should be looking unto Jesus. And that's my encouragement to you today. Look unto Jesus. Help us, Lord. Help us to look past these things, to, to recognize the realities that are before us, but to focus on what I call the super reality. And the super reality is God in Christ Jesus, revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. And when we do, when we look properly upon the Lord Jesus, we will give thanks to the Father, and we will give it to him through the Spirit, for all of his goodness toward us, for giving us Jesus, uh, whose sacrificial life washed away everything that stands between us and godliness, everything that stands between us and, and eternity, everything that stands between us and righteousness and life and light. He wiped all that away by shedding his blood for us. And, and he, he, his body was broken so that we can enter into the Holy of Holies, that is relationship with the true living holy God. And he rose up from the dead in victory. And when he rose up, we rose up with him. And we sit in heavenly places with him in the thrones and heavenly places where he sits. And we should give thanks to God continually for that revelation. Thanks to God continually for that reality. Because Jesus Christ and all that he's done for us has made reality a beautiful and wonderful thing. So let's give thanks to God for all of his good and wonderful works, and all of his favor, all of his blessing, all his provision and kindness and abundance toward the children of his love, toward me, and toward you. You know, I defy you to find me a man, a woman, a child, that's focusing on Jesus, who's also fretful and, and worried uh, and bitter, uh, because when we look at Jesus Christ, all of these things fall away. As a matter of fact, that's how you can tell someone who is truly looking at Jesus Christ, these things fall away. They have fallen away and they continue to fall away. They fall away quickly. These are folks that don't hold grudges. These are folks that don't have neg negative things to say, even though negative things may have been said about them. These are, these are folks who respond in love and kindness. Uh, these are folks who, who uh, Jesus talks about when he says, blessed are you when you are cursed and you are maligned and, and you are persecuted for my sake. For so they did the prophets who were before you. And those prophets continue to be a blessing to God uh, in spite of all that they went through. 
And so we see those. We see those who are looking at Jesus Christ and keeping their eyes on him because that those things are typical of them. And they remind themselves constantly to give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his kindness, for his mercy, for his grace, his wonderful works to the children of men. And I think that's what we need to do today. Uh, set aside that which would, uh, would make us bitter and, 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 and cynical. Uh, set aside that which would, which would bring up contempt for others in us. And let's remember how gracious the Lord is. And, and, and how, as the song says, he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. And may we do the same thing to others and look beyond the faults and the shortcomings of those around us and see that they just simply need Jesus. They simply need to look to him and they need to remember, as the psalmist says, to give God thanks for his goodness and for his wonderful works toward the children of men, starting with each and every one of us individually. Uh, what, what a perspective uh, that we need to have uh, on Thanksgiving, the day where we, we focus on the goodness of God. I hope that's what you're focusing on. I, I know there's some focus on family food and football and those kinds of things, and and. God bless everybody <laughs> who's focused on those things. Those things have a place. But the, but the true focus ought to be on the man, Jesus Christ. And I'm glad for those who don't wait for Thanksgiving season to be a Thanksgiving people. We give thanks all year round, every day, every time the Holy Spirit brings to mind how good our God is to the children of men. You see, Thanksgiving it looks like something. It, once again, it's more than a holiday. It's more than a season of the year. It looks like something. It looks like Jesus. He never failed to give thanks to the Father for every opportunity to serve and to glorify Him. For every provision, for every conversation, for every meal, for every heartbeat, for every breath, for every day, for every moment. Jesus constantly gave God thanks. And even though Jesus dealt with contempt and rejection and misunderstanding from those he came to save, he was never dismissive, he was never critical, he was never harsh toward them, and he remained faithful and committed to his calling and his work. And he remained thankful. Uh, so often uh, we see the scripture reminding us, uh, teaching us that Jesus gave thanks. Uh, in Luke 22, 17, it says, Then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And in, in Luke 22, 19, And he took bread and he gave thanks. And, and when the 5,000 were before him uh, and, and they had no food to eat, no provision, instead of sending them off to fend for themselves, Jesus took two fish and five loaves, from a lad that happened to have them, and he lifted it up to the Father and gave thanks. And then he broke the fish and the bread and served 5,000 men besides women and children. And it was all out of a heart of faith and thanksgiving. Beloveds, may we have the same heart. Because once again, thanksgiving looks like something. Thanksgiving looks like Jesus. Let your thanksgiving this year look like Jesus. So, May the Lord our God save us from this cynical, selfish, and ungrateful spirit that's in our world today. Now, Jesus saved us and called us his own. And his we are if we will simply receive the Holy Spirit joyfully and thankfully. We've been given the opportunity uh, to enjoy God fully, and our lives are testaments to the choice we make to receive what he offers. And he offers us himself. It's our job and our joy to keep our hearts, our minds, our eyes fixed on Jesus. And we have every reason to do so. So remember, beloveds, our God is so good and his mercy endures forever. And as the psalmist said five times in Psalm 107, Oh, that men, oh, that you and me would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I want to finish with just these few thoughts that I think are pertinent for the day that we live in. Uh, this is Thanksgiving Day, and there are there, there's that which is different about this Thanksgiving uh, than any other Thanksgiving I've ever experienced. And it may be the same for you. 
Um, and you, you know what that, that that has to do with the fact that that we're in the middle here in the United States of of a, of a pandemic, the COVID nineteen pandemic, and um, it has changed things quite a bit, changed some perspectives. Uh, it changed my perspective and given me a fresh one on Thanksgiving because this Thanksgiving I'm not getting the opportunity to be uh, around some of the same people that I, I always am around on Thanksgiving. Some family members uh, and friends uh, just don't have the opportunity to reach out personally uh, uh, that, that we normally have. And the same is probably true of you. But I'm very, very thankful for those um, who have been thoughtful and kind enough to uh, realize the season that we are in and to take the kind of careful precautions and the steps that uh, will promote health and safety and recovery for, uh, for our communities, for our families, and for our nations. Uh, COVID-19 is a serious, serious situation and we need to treat it as such. And I think some uh, have not treated it as seriously as it needs to be, which is probably and partly why we are where we are today. So let us be careful in our doings and our dealings uh, that we deal with each other with the other in mind. Remember, remember, love does no harm to its neighbor. And not only does love do no harm to its neighbor, love does everything. It love actually we love our neighbors. It is, a, it is the, the second most important commandment after loving God with all of our hearts and minds and souls to love our neighbors as ourselves. And if there's anything that we can do, anything that we have been advised and instructed to do by those who, who understand what we're up against, that anything that we can do to protect our brothers and our sisters and our families and, 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 and our community and our neighbors, then we ought to do that. And I'm very, very grateful and thankful for those who have done that and continue to do so. I'm very, very thankful and grateful for all of our first responders and all of those who, who work in our healthcare industry, who put themselves on the line for the rest of us uh, so that we can be healthy and strong and that we can recover uh, and, and we can get back to a place as, as a community, as a nation, uh, where, where we can be together and, uh, and, and where we can, uh, in some senses, get back to, to life as it ought to be. And so I am grateful for those, and I just wanted to say that I'm very, very thankful for those because I think that that type of ministry, that type of service, and that type of sacrifice is commendable before God and before man. And it's certainly commendable in my eyes. I believe it is in yours, too. So blessings on you. Enjoy your day today. Enjoy your, uh, your family, your friends that you can be around, the ones that you FaceTime or, or Skype or, or, or you may have to ha reach out from a distance or you Zoom or <laughs> all these things that we didn't know that we would have to do, but uh, we know now. Uh, enjoy uh, uh, the, everything that God has given you and remember that God is good and he's good all the time. And keep this in mind. Uh, Psalm 107, 8, 15, 21, and 31. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Happy Thanksgiving, beloved. Keep spreading the joy. God bless you.